How's it going my truant people, Dr. Slacking the Slacking Doctor, back on Pokemon Showdown for week uh, 8, I believe, of our, of Peeba, goodness, week 8 of Peeba, I believe, that's a P-E-B-A, -E -E and as you can probably tell by my slurred speech and confusion straight away, I am pretty exhausted right now, but I need to get this done, I need to get this recorded, I want you guys to see this battle, it was a great battle, we're taking on my man, Blake Trout and the Milstraten Swanner, I believe his team name is. If I remember, I will do my best to link his channel down in the description. Blake, if I forget, then please shout at me to link it because he makes really cool videos. Really, really funny guy, and this was a great battle, so uh, you guys should definitely go check out his channel as well. Um, and this, I believe, is week eight. I believe. Uh, fresh off the back of beating my man Todd. If you haven't seen that already, then go out and check uh, out last week's video, last week's battle. So here we are in the battle, guys, uh, and you can see that Blake actually brought the Silvalli, the Jirachi, the Mega Ordino, the Weavile, the Blastoise, and the Latio. So there are some things straight away at Team Preview that I was delighted, delighted to not see, and particularly the Shaman, although I didn't think Shaman had a great matchup against me. Uh, the Shaman and the Entei, especially that Entei, I'm happy to not see that because... It just put extra pressure on the mill tank, which I didn't really need to see. Um, so super, super happy to see those two not uh, turning up. Also, the Miss Magius, that was his only switch into Specs PZ, is a notice noticeable absence, making Tri Attack so spammable here. So, so spammable. Um, so looking at his team, I expected his best lead uh, was either the Silvalli or the. Uh, Jirachi. And if it was the Silvalli, I wanted to get some information, find out what type it was, everything like that early on. Could be Silvalli Ghost potentially to try and switch into PZ, and if it is, I need to know that. Um, could be Silvalli Psychic if he wants to double up Psychic to try and handle the Infernape um, so that it doesn't just get the Latios wearing it down all the time. Any number of things this Silvalli could be, and I want to find that out early. So I decided to lead with the Infernape here to try and scout for that. And then if he leads with a Rocks Jirachi, I just pressure out and he doesn't get his Rocks up. So uh, that's going really fast for some reason. Uh, so we lead with Wukong and he actually leads with the Weavile. I stay in because I know I'm Scarf and I don't know what he can do. He can fake out, so there's a chunk, but that's okay. Uh, and he goes out into Blastoise here. I just click the U-turn because it's going to get quite a hefty amount of chip on that Weavile regardless. Um, and it gives me momentum out into Keanu Reeves. And now he's at a position where this Blastoise, I think I saw, had some physical bulk. Um, and I just want to click try attack and say it's going to be a two hit KO on you, even if you're Spadef, even if you're AV. Or you have to give me something else and give me big damage on it. Um, so we just got into this thing. We actually see leftovers pop here. So we know he's not AV. I think we maybe have a chance to kill with try attack. So we just click it and see what happens. And he goes out into the Jirachi. And this reveals that he is bulky Jirachi, but with no leftovers, which intrigues me. So I go out into Mandibuzz, seeing what this thing wants to do. And he actually goes out into Silvalli Ghost. Now that's great information because he clearly thought we would keep spamming try attack. It means A, he maybe doesn't have great coverage or particularly offensive presence to hit the Porygon Z with the Jirachi. He, B might not have Wish because he's just taken 33% on his Jirachi, as we can see here. Hopefully it'll show me, yeah, 67. So it's showing that it might be a three-hit KO with Tri-Attack, and he doesn't want to deal with that. He maybe doesn't have Wish. Um, any number of things that kind of suggests to me here. So I'm happy to go out into my Mandibuzz um, and just probably... Uh, Click U-turn here because I expect him to parting shot, not wanting to take a foul play or anything like that. And he gives me a slower mo piece of momentum. Yeah, exactly. So we get the momentum. This is exactly what I was saying about the Mandibuzz giving me momentum uh, with the Mega Ordino around. And now Mega Ordino does not want to take an Iron Head at all. This is a league where we do have to Mega Evolve, so he can't even stay in the normal form and try and eat an Iron Head that way. Um, so I expect him fully to go out into the Blastoise here. Um, and I'm just going to click Substitute for that exact reason. But he actually goes for the Protect, and I think his reason is he's trying to scout for the Z-move there. Um, now, going for the Protect... Uh, sorry, just as he goes into Blastoise, we're just going to go back there. But going for the Protect uh, gave me a free substitute, which I can understand. Um, but I don't think there was an awful lot he could have done about it anyway. His best thing would have been switching to Blastoise, knowing we're in the same position regardless. Um... He could have had Hyper Voice, but I do resist that because it's not like a Pixelate Mon. So I just fire off an Iron Head, and as we see, that is 28% to the Blastoise. Um, and what that means is that he is definitely in range of a Z Dig. I think he was, even without the Iron Head chip, that's why I'm saying I'm not sure the Protect turn really mattered, letting me get the sub up. Um, and now he goes out into the Silvalli, and I click Iron Head. Um, and we actually flinch the Silvalli here. 
We do do 49.7%, so it's showing to me that it's maybe a two-hit KO on this Ghost of Valley. Uh, but crucially, this Ghost of Valley is taking a huge amount of chip, and that's really important because if I want to start clicking Coast Combat with Wukong, if I want to start clicking Try Attack with Porygon Z, I need to wear this thing down somehow. So getting 49% is huge. The flinch uh, sucked for him. How much it matters long term is debatable. Um, and I think it kind of balances with some other things later in the game, which we'll get to. Uh, but we just spam Iron Head here and we get to land on both, which is extremely lucky that we landed both with the hustle ability. Um, and then here, he does break us up. And I don't want to risk missing and taking damage on the Durant because I do think it's a potential win con. So I just switch out into the Mandibus. I have such a safe switch in with leftovers, meaning we only take 8% in total. It's a really easy switch. Um, and he does just decide to stay in and sack off the Sylvali. I just pivot out in case he goes into something else, knowing that U-turn will kill if he doesn't. And we bring in the Infernate. Now I have a Scarf U-turner here. That speeds everything on his draft. And he goes into the Latios. And I'm scared maybe this is Scarf Latios from the way he brought it in. Uh, he's seen I probably Scarf Infernate from the fact I was happy to take on the Weavile. Well, not necessarily. I guess I could have had Mark Punch, but still. Uh, from the way I click U-turn on the Weavile, it maybe suggests I'm Scarf. So the fact he brings this in says to me, this is probably Scarf. He has to click uh, like Draco or Psychic here. I don't think he can Shadow Ball into the Infernape and risk taking a big U-turn. Um, so Big Steve just looks like a really, really safe switch in. We go out into Big Steve, and as you can see, we just took 26% from that, which is nothing. He drops his special attack with the Draco, and this is exactly how we planned it with the Assault Vest. I now click Pursuit, and we do 75% that Latios, and that Latios is no longer a Infernape switch in, which is awesome, because Infernape, if you look at the remainder of his draft, has no switch-ins. This does a uh, Meryl Cujo, who's Mega Rodino, doesn't really want to take a Close Combat or a Flare Blitz. Um, Starboy, the Jirachi, does not want to take a Flare Blitz or really a Close Combat. Um, the Weavar doesn't want to take a Flare Blitz and definitely not a Close Combat. And the Latios now at 25% pretty much dies to everything. So uh, we still have six Pokemon left and one of those should pretty much win this game on its own if I play it right. He goes out into the Jirachi um, and I just need to go back so we can see that exactly what happens. So as we pursue, he goes out, loses 75% and he goes out into the Jirachi on uh, Big Steve. And I don't know what this Jirachi wants to do particularly yet. All I've seen is it come in, be bulky, sponge your hit, and go out again. So we go out into Old World, and he actually goes for the Reflect. And this is really, really scary. My best thing that I can do here is either defog away the Protect or just scout and see what he wants to do. So he flinches me there as I kind of go for the defog. But I realize that 27% is pretty much nothing. He's doing very little to me, and I can probably just stall out this uh, Reflect with my leftovers. And as you can see, after two turns... We're still doing okay, but he does get the double flinch there, and that's why I'm saying the flinch, flinch Iron Head was definitely more lucky. We're not Serene Grace, and we're Hustle, so the fact we were even landing them all the time was lucky. Um, but, you know, he did get some flinches back, so I definitely think we were we were lucky, but I don't think it overly changed too much. And he decides to switch out here um, as I just go for the roost, because I know my best thing to do is to just try and stall out this Reflect. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. As soon as he doesn't flinch me, I get a Roost off. But he goes out into Weavile. I have a safe switch in and how now. And this is the moment where I realize I have no milk drink. Up until this point, I didn't realize that I had put Heal Bell into the wrong slot. So I'm sat there and I'm like, okay, I can Seismic Toss this turn and Heal... Uh, no, I can Milk Drink this turn to Scout if he has a Low Kick. Ah, I don't have Milk Drink. Fortunately, with the Reflect up and as running Seismic Toss, the Reflect makes absolutely no difference. So we can just click Seismic Toss or Stealth Rocks. I go for the Rocks here, figuring that how now is going to go down sooner or later anyway. I just want to get my Rocks up early, get extra chip on everything and make Inferno even stronger late game. And we go out into Mandibus here because we've already shown that from 100% we can probably wall the Jirachi and maybe even stall out the Reflect. So we go out into the Mandibus, we get back to 100% and here... Uh, even though he's at plus one, he's still going to do nothing, and there's no reason for me to not do anything but U-turn, because the Reflect actually goes down this turn. So as his Reflect drops, I get Scarf Infernape in, and I'm like, okay, I want to uh, click Flare Blitz, but I don't want to take that recoil, because this Infernape really can win late game if I can manage that recoil carefully. So I'm going to click Earthquake. If he goes out into Latios... That's fine, he's going to take rocks damage, I can go back into Big Steve, I click Pursuit, it drops, and we reset. Uh, at least this thing is gone. I'm fairly confident this thing will die to an Earthquake, so I'm just going to make the safe play and go for the Earthquake. 
Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to click the U-turn. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. I do apologise. I'm going to click the U-turn back into Mandibuzz, and we're just cycling around, wearing this thing down. Um, and he goes for the reflect on the... Um, on the U-turn, which to me was like the bravest play. If I click Flare Blitz here, it just died. I'd already seen it was Light Clay from the Reflect turn, so I was shocked to see that. I thought he would probably go Latios and just sack it, um, but instead he stays in. So we go into Old World when we see he stays in, because there's no reason not to. He goes for another Power Up Punch, and I believe we just click uh, Defog. Yeah, we click Defog to get rid of his screen. Yes, we get rid of our own rocks, which sucks, but we just get rid of that screen and make this thing easier to kill at some point. I think we just U-turn here. Um, because even if he sets his Reflect up, that means he's not attacking, which gives us Infernape for free. Infernape comes in and clicks Earthquake, and even without the Reflect, we don't quite kill here. And this is the turn I was talking about. I thought that he would either go into the um, Latios and just sack it, in which case that's not a huge problem. Uh, I could go into Big Steve and pivot around. Or I thought the Earthquake would kill... And he actually lives on 3% here, which I believe is probably a roll, probably a low roll. And I think uh, he's expecting me to maybe U-turn if he lives at all. Uh, so he just fires off a power-up punch. I don't know if he had a psychic stab. In fact, no, because he has power-up punch, iron head, reflect, light screen. So yeah, he had no psychic stab for me anyway. Um, iron has resisted, so his best thing he can do is power-up punch. Um, and we are going to hit KO with this earthquake. There's no need for him to go into Latios um, and try and sponge it on the switch he just goes out into weavile here and i don't want to take that extra fake out damage and everything else so i go out into mill tank this is always my weavile check um and he actually makes that really good read and clicks brick break and again we don't have the milk drink so there's nothing i can do i know i'm going to be too shot by this brick break but i know i'll live one um and i just get a seismic toss off for chip here on the weavile breaking any potential focus sash which is the reason that i clicked stealth rock earlier i'm remembering now i clicked stealth rock earlier with this thing when i was in against the jirachi i think it was just because I wanted to make sure that this thing got its sash broken. And here was another great opportunity. I knew he would stay in and go for another brick break, seeing that it was a two-hit KO and knowing I wouldn't be able to do much to him. So we just fire off that seismic task, guarantee break his sash, and now this thing can't beat me. I know that I can just go into Infernate. He hasn't got any priority. I click close combat and something's dying. Um, he actually goes out into the Merokujo, the Mega Odino, and we just U-turn, reading that switch there, I believe, just trying to keep the momentum going. And Keanu Reeves can come in, Light Screen's got one turn left, but he's not going to be able to Oko me from this range. So we just fire off a Tri-Attack, doesn't leave us 29%, that's next to nothing. Um, and now the Light Screen's gone, Tri-Attack is just so spammable against his team, as you see we destroy the Mega Odino there. He could go out into the um, Latios. But he actually goes for the hard read. And we just stay in because at this point I could try and preserve differential and go into the Metagross predicting a Draco Meteor. But I don't see the need in getting anything worn down. I just want to stay in and I think he's been showing that he's making predictions by going for that brick break with the Weavile. And I think it's really not worth it. If he has a Shadow Ball it is going to start chunking down the Metagross because we've already taken one Draco. So I'm just going to stay in and click try attack again. And he does go for the read with the Shadow Ball. We are immune and we do get to fire off another try attack which is just awesome taking that thing out. Um, and then here at the end we have a very... Uh, well, a sort of simple switch, and I go out into Metagross, um, expecting him to want to go for either the Icicle Crash or the Low Kick. I don't think he can click Knock Off against Porygon Z, um, in case I go into... Why do I not think he can click? I'm not sure, but either way, I'm just trying to preserve some differential. If I have to sack Big Steve, it doesn't matter, because it gets me an Infernate for free, which guaranteed wins here. It doesn't die to an Ice Shard. He won't have Fake Out pressure, so I can just click Close Combat on him. But there's a chance I might be able to save Differential if he goes for either the Brick Break or the Icicle Crash, which he does. Um, so we just go out with Big Steve, um, and we're free to then Bullet Punch this thing down. That's why we have Bullet Punch and Meteor Mash. Meteor Mash for the Mega Rodino, Bullet Punch to clean up a Weavile. So there we go. A GG to my man, Blake. That is a huge 5-0 win for us in Absolute Playoffs. Differential could be very, very important. Um, at this point in the season... Me, Eevee Master, and Luke are all exactly on the same record, sitting at um, sitting at eight and three, eight wins, three losses. I do believe right now. So going into the last three, no, it can't be eight and three, is it? Because it's only twelve weeks long. That would be eleven. So what is it? Five and three. What week was this? This was week eight. I said, didn't I? said this was week eight i think we're sitting at five and three 
Where did I get eight and three from? We haven't even played week 11 yet. I'm getting so ahead of myself. Anyway, regardless, I think this puts us at five and three. Five wins, three losses. Uh, it's the exact same record as Luke and Evie Master still, uh, with Isaac hot on our heels at four and four. So this was a really, really huge win in the playoff race, keeping us in that bracket. And this plus five differential was really important because at this time I had, before this game, by far the worst differential of any of us uh, in the playoff pursuit. So this was a really, really important win here. And that's why I kind of made that play into Big Steve to try and preserve uh, differential, which I don't normally do, but I just wanted to try there. So there we go. Uh, GG's my man, Blake Trout. It was a really, really awesome game. Um, I know he was really frustrated. I know he misclicked on one of the turns with the Jirachi. I don't think it changed too much. Um, I know he just felt really frustrated after this game. Um, and I completely understand that's Pokemon. We all get that way. But uh, GG to him. Super, super fun battle from my perspective. Uh, and great to pick up another win for the Lake District Spirits. So uh, if you guys are hyped for the remaining... Uh, the remaining four weeks, four weeks left of the season to decide who makes playoffs. And in that time, uh, we go up against Toasty Rex, one of my favorite people to battle. We just battled him in the LTC. Uh, we go up against Eevee Master, one of our direct ri rivals playoffs. We go up against Fadaki, someone who I have known in the community for a while, who our Fadanti is named after, uh, but I don't believe I have ever battled him. And we go up against Young Bishop, another person who I've known for a little while in the community, really, really sound guy, uh, not having the best of seasons, but I've never battled him either, I don't believe. So they are our remaining four fixtures, and I'm really, really excited for those. If you guys are hyped too, then let me know down in the comment section. Hopefully, hopefully we can push on and try and make playoffs in people, which would be incredible. Um, and yeah, we're going to leave it here, guys. I'll be back next week with that battle against Toasty. I hope you're looking forward to that one. Thank you so much for loafing around with me, and I'll catch you again next time.